In so many ways, Henry Ford was a simple man. He liked to go camping with his friends. That's Thomas Edison behind him. He enjoyed old-time country dancing. Here he is with John Burroughs, the naturalist. Skating with his grandchildren. They plant a garden together, Henry Ford II and Benson. His first car, he called it a quadricycle. That's his wife, Clara. He began with an idea that most people thought wouldn't work, but he made it work. And the tools he used were common sense, ingenuity, and perseverance along with a natural instinct for knowing how to put machines together and make them run. He was born into a world of limited horizons, and though he left the farm that might have been his heritage, he never lost his love for the land and the everlasting cycle of seed time and harvest. What he accomplished helped men put the burden of work on machines, and broke the barriers of space and time, of isolation and distance. His life was a paradox. While his mechanical genius helped to change forever the lives of people everywhere, he sought to preserve in some permanent form a record of the world around him and his ever-widening interest in it. He collected buildings the way others collect stamps and put them in a village where time stands still. He assembled acres of machines and put them under cover in a vast historical museum. And early, he discovered the astonishing capacity of the motion picture camera to document for all time whatever it saw when the crank was turned. In April 1914, at his Highland Park plant, he organized a motion picture department which through the years produced films that were shown in theaters and schools throughout the country. Travelogues, newsreels, and documentaries that touched on nearly every facet of American life. This is the way the country looks in the years before the First World War. Rich, rolling, but often inaccessible. The man on the farm works as his forefathers have. It's a hard life for man and beast. for the farmer's wife, too. Many a quiet evening at home, because there's no place to go and no light to read by. A man thinks twice before he goes to market on roads like this. And sometimes, he never even gets there. It's a long walk to school on a muddy road. More fun to go by sleigh in the winter. 
During recess, there's time for a snowball fight. Of a climb up the old elm tree, if you've got the spunk for daring deeds like this. The one sure way to get someplace is on a train. Life in the city moves at a slow pace. This is Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington. No trip to the Capitol is complete without a tour of the White House. President Wilson lives here now. The East Room with its chandeliers and shiny floors. There's more hustle and bustle down at the market, Faneuil Hall in Boston, or in New York City on the Lower East Side. Always plenty to do and see in the big town. Ride the elevated train all the way from the Battery far uptown. There's the Hippodrome, one of the big theaters in New York. Another way to see the city is a boat ride around Manhattan Island. All aboard. Watch out. Some city slicker may try to sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. We're passing the Battery with its famous aquarium. There's a Navy cruiser at anchor. Great ocean liners along the Hudson River. Mighty tall buildings in New York City. The Flatiron Building, shaped like a triangle. And the Woolworth Building, 60 stories high, tallest in the world. Look at that traffic on Fifth Avenue. Kind of peaceful over on Riverside Drive. Grant's tomb, always one of the favorite sights to see. Sunday in Central Park. There's no place like it for a leisurely stroll or a boat ride on the lagoon. once a year? Atlantic City, of course. No, that's not a real elephant. It's a hotel at the end of the boardwalk. Look, they're waving out the elephant's eye. The Atlantic Ocean. And a few hardy acrobats. Most of the time, we'll stroll along the boardwalk ride along in the rolling chair. 